Somebody is dead. No one shall leave this place until I know. In A Haunting in Venice, Sir Kenneth Branagh once again plays the famous detective Hercule Poirot. He's attending a seance when he stumbles upon a murder. Ah, but is it murder or is it angry ghosts? Detective, you are here to discredit me, but I can talk to the dead. This movie is a lot of fun. Part crime thriller, part haunted house movie, with lots of creepy visual images and a building sense of supernatural dread. Fans of the previous two Agatha Christie movies, Murder on the Orient Express and Death on the Nile, should be very happy with this latest highbrow detective mystery. You stole a magical video game from a bunch of gangsters? We're going to that camp and we're gonna get what's ours. Camp Hideout is a PG-rated adventure. It's the story of a teen who swipes a top secret gadget and decides to head off to a summer camp where he will hide from the dim-witted thugs that come looking for him. Not screen for critics, but this is from the producer of The War with Grandpa, so you can expect a mild preteen adventure with some bonding with friends and a healthy dose of slapstick violence. What's your big goal, dream? I want to be an astronaut. Amazon has A Million Miles Away, where Michael Peña plays Jose Hernandez, the son of migrant farm workers whose dream it is to become an astronaut for NASA. Who better to leave this planet and dive into the unknown than a migrant farm worker? This is a feel-good biography, although it is a bit cheesy. Still, it's easier to cheer this man as he chases his dream. I lost his number, but I need to find this guy that I met on the plane. Sounds really stupid. Sounds great. And finally, Love at First Sight tells the story of a boy and a girl who meet cute on a flight to England, but then she loses his number, and now it's a mad dash across London to try and refind each other. Now, I'm not sure if our romantic leads have enough chemistry to justify the search, but it's still easy to cheer for young lovers in this latest likable but slight romance over on Netflix. Is it better to have had a good thing and lost it or never to have had it. And that's what's new this weekend at the movies. I'm Sean McBride, the movie guy. It is Friday, which means I'm joined with Sean McBride, the movie guy, this morning, <laughs> talking about some new movies headed to streaming and theaters. Yeah. This is kind of the slow season, no? Yeah, it, uh, you know, we're at, summer just ended. Right. So some yeah. of those summer movies, you know, Barbie, for example, is still in theaters still here. Still hanging on. Um, and so, if you know, Hollywood wants to make sure you have every opportunity to see their big movies. <laughs> and now it's just smaller things. It's interesting that um, one of the films out this week, though, has a pretty pretty good budget and mm -hmm. it's kind of surprising that it will come out now because it kind of feels like a ghost story so why didn't they push mm -hmm. it back a month or so right. but I, I wonder if they thought well nothing else is out there so maybe we can uh, make true. some hay while the sun shines maybe right. beat the crowd too of all the spooky movies that will be They're coming on out way. on October I'm yep. sure you've got a long list coming up but We'll focus on the here and now of mm -hmm. what we got going on this weekend. Where do you want to start? Let's start in theaters and let's start with that movie, okay. which is A Haunting in Venice. Mm -hmm. Now, this is Kenneth Branagh making yet another Agatha Christie movie. He's been playing Hercule Poirot, the famous detective. Um, you know, we've seen him in Murder on the Orient Express a few okay. years ago and A Death on the Nile, which was oh, the sure, recent one. Yeah. Um, these are handsomely mounted plays. They are period productions. It's it's Brana, so he has mm -hmm. the ability to get a really nice cast. In this case, he picks up Tina Fey, he picks up Michelle Yeoh. I mean, he, he gets good casts out of this. And they're old, you know, feel-good murder mysteries from Agatha oh, okay. yeah, Christie. Yeah. So, you know, people know them and they, you know, part of the fun is you want to go and match wits with the great detective here. Of course. Now, the, the interesting thing this time around, is it is also a bit of a ghost story, as you might tell from the from the title. Mm -hmm. So he is invited, Tina Fey's character calls him and says, look, there's this woman, she's a medium. I don't know if she's a fake or not, but I want to go to this seance. And I want you to tell me, is she, you know, is making this up or is she real? Well, they go to the seance in this house in, the, in Venice, actually. And um, it's the house is reportedly haunted. And suddenly there's a murder, and suddenly Poirot starts seeing things and hearing things. And so, so, you know, this character who is known for figuring out everything by using logic and detailed observations of what's going on, suddenly he can't trust his mind because 
what is that sound? Is that why are there children mm -hmm. in this house? You know, stuff like that. So I, I like it. The filmmakers absolutely make this look and feel like it's a haunted house movie. Ooh. And I think that building sense of dread coupled with really nice off kilter cinematography, sure. great production design, um, the house, the architecture, the location settings, that's all very wonderful. Um, I like this a whole lot. Um, mm. it's, it's interesting that these are fairly expensive movies and they're quite frankly not making a lot of money but I, I thought this was a lot of fun I enjoyed it I liked the ghost story aspect I liked the murder mystery yeah. aspect um, look I, I suspect that and these movies obviously are going to appeal to older audiences sure. so once again I can tell my mom hey there's a movie you can go see this weekend but, this one's for you, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a little bit different than all the other ones when it comes to like the ghost feel. Yeah, it's not uh, in your face. It's yeah. not special effects. Ironically, he did a lot of special effects in his last movie, okay, uh, right. you know, Death on an Isle, and it that kind of got in the way. Mm -hmm. This is just a straightforward movie, but I think it's well done. Okay, I couldn't help but notice the one thing that was in my face is the mustache. Oh yes, well, yeah. it's there. That it's is a, a special effect in and of a, itself. <laughs> that's a killer mustache, sir. All right, and then we're headed to streaming because that's the, where the other two are. Yeah, there are. But I'll just very quickly, oh, I yeah, will sure. say that there's another film in theaters called uh, Camp Hideout, which okay. is uh, from the producers of The War with Grandpa. Um, not screen for critics, and okay. I was going to go see it, but it was like raining, and I thought I'm okay. not driving to Houston for this. So, so uh, go see it if you're a fan of that. But it's aimed at ten year old boys. Okay, well, good to know. Thank you for that information. <laughs> So. And then now on streaming. On home streaming, uh, you have two pretty interesting offerings. Uh, you have a million miles away over on Amazon. It's Michael Peña playing a real-life character. He is uh, Jose Hernandez. He is the son of migrant farm workers who in the 1960s saw the NASA, uh, you know, going to the moon oh, yeah. and got inspired and said, I want to be an astronaut. Except he is from a very poor family. Mm -hmm. They're just, you know, they're farm workers. They don't have the ability to go to school, you know, you know at a, they're always moving around. Yeah. So that's all tough. But nevertheless, he's going to persist. He's going to get good grades. He's, he's going to have a teacher that kind of helps him out here. And he says, I'm going to be a, an astronaut. And people laugh at him. And he gets a job as an engineer. And they hand him the keys because they think he's the janitor. Mm -hmm. Doesn't care. He's going to do what he needs to do to become an astronaut. This is a real story, so we know he's going to space. You right. know? Um, <laughs> I think this is, this is look, I, I, I enjoy this a lot. It's a feel-good story, both because of it's an American dream story where follow your dreams and watch them come to, to fruition, but also it's an immigrant story. A lot of Spanish in this that you'll need to read, you know, sure. because he comes from a, a Mexican family here. Uh, I, I liked almost all of it. There are some cheesy moments, you know. Uh, Michael Pena, who is 47 years old, I looked him up, right? At one point, he's playing an 18-year-old just graduating from, oh, well, from uh, yeah. high school, and it's like, oh, Michael, stretch, Michael, maybe. Michael, no, it's no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, um, but it's fun. And there's, there's, you know, they, there's always talking about uh, butterflies, and at one point in the space shuttle, we see a butterfly go across. It's supposed to be a metaphor. It's sure. a little cheesy. But I think it is a feel-good movie. Um, it's a good one to show the entire family, and it's a, you know, it's a feel-good, follow-your-dreams mm -hmm. type movie, so I like that quite a bit. Is this one of those ones where obviously based on true story, but there's like a little embellishments here and there? Based on a true story, based on his book um, about what he okay. was growing up and what, what he, following his dreams. Sure. I don't know how much of that is true, but if it's a Hollywood film, you can assume that a lot yeah. of it's made up. <laughs> Something there is going to be added in. Yeah. Uh, next film we got going uh, on? The final one, this one's over on Netflix. This is uh, Love at First Sight. Okay. This is an odd movie. It's the story <laughs> of a, a young woman. She's got to go to London for her father. He's getting remarried. And she's not happy about that. She uh, She's notorious for not having her phone charged. So she meets a guy who offers her, you know, his mm -hmm. charging cable. And he's also going to London. And fate conspires to kind of put them together. And theoretically have this magical flight. And then they get to London. And he gives her his number. But mm -hmm. her phone isn't charged. So it doesn't save. And so now she has to go across London and try and track him down. Yeah. So uh, I'll be honest with you. I, I like the idea. But that flight across the pond was not very romantic. Matter of mm -hmm. fact, they sleep most of the time, you know. <laughs> so they make, get to make that joke, oh, we slept together on our first date, you know, because they were sitting oh, yeah, next to each right, other on yeah. the airplane. Um, I didn't think they had that much chemistry. And then when she gets to London, tracking him down doesn't seem to be that difficult either. It's mm -hmm. a big city, but, you know, somebody happens to be at this 
this at the wedding and right. say, oh, I've got to go to this other thing where this kid, and she goes, oh, that's him, you know, so mm -hmm. she, she goes looking for him. Uh, it's noticeable, notable also for having Jamila Jamil as, um, she's kind of like a, a narrator, but she shows up playing, she's the flight attendant, she's the bartender, mm -hmm. you know, she's, she's all these different characters, and she gets to break the fourth wall and tell us what's going on. Um, I guess that's fine, but like I said, I, it's, it's a love story. I wish that it had more chemistry between the two leads, but um, that being said, I, I, I think some of it is good. Some of it, I mean, certainly when we find out why the uh, son is going back, uh, that, mm -hmm. that will make you cry a little bit. And sometimes it's good just to cry at a movie. Yeah. But um, yeah, I just don't think it's a great movie. Okay. So. Yeah, so maybe if you're just looking for a little bit of romance and a good cry at the end, mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. Yep, exactly. Oh, it never hurts anybody, <laughs> huh? Well, that is a look at all the movies that are out this yep. week. Two in theaters, two on streaming, plenty to choose from. As always, we thank Sean for stopping by. Of course. Giving us a rundown.